Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today, we're going to take a look at depth compositing inside of Adobe After Effects. Now, here's the idea of uh, what we're going to be creating. So the cool thing about this technique is that we can composite stock footage inside of our 3D renders and use a depth pass to do it. So let's take a look at uh, this example that we're going to be using. So if we just solo some of the key layers here. Here's the 3D render. So I've used Ray Fire in uh, 3D Max and you can also do this in Cinema 4D. You know, you fracture an object. You have a little bit of a uh, shadow and lights coming from the uh, side there. And it looks pretty good, but it looks a little bit CG because all we have are these perfect pieces. So what we want to do is composite some stock footage elements into the shot. Now, if we do it without the depth compositing technique, the elements are just right on top of the clip. And this doesn't always look right and it's not always the best solution. but by using a depth map, and a depth map looks something like this, where the white is the closer to the camera and the black is further away from the camera. And we use that in a way that allows us to composite it inside of the shot wherever we want that depth to be. So in this case, we could take the gamma and adjust it to make it, say, further or closer to the camera. So it's a, it's a pretty cool and very believable effect. And we have some dust. And so instead of just a fake looking CG crash, now we have uh, you know a more detailed one with, uh, with stock footage elements. Now some people might be wondering where does this Z pass come from? Well, you can get it a few different ways. So inside of most 3D applications, you can go into the render settings, in this case render elements, and add a multi-pass render option. So we could do a Z pass. And usually there's options like uh, depth and distance, so that's the minimum and the maximum. And when you render it out, it creates a separate file that has just that depth information. And likewise, in Cinema 4D, you can go to the render settings under multi-pass. Uh, let's see, if you click multi-pass here, you could go down to the bottom, click on depth, and now you have a depth pass that will render out when you render your scene. So pretty handy. Um, and even inside of uh, our plugin Element 3D, so here I have just a basic scene, and I could click on my element layer and say duplicate it, and then go to the output and change it from composite to Z pass. And then you can do some depth compositing. So we're going to go to our project here. We have our crash footage, and we have our Z pass. So those are the two things that we need and I'm going to take them, hold down shift, and drop them into our project. Now, I'm going to go ahead and move them into place. Now, I do have some tracking data, so I've two-dimensionally tracked this with the null object, and uh, you can see that here. And we're going to take our two pieces of footage, so our Z-pass and our render, and parent them to that null object. And that way, shut that off it'll look somewhat like it's tracked to our plate. So you could do a 3D track if your shot you know, requires it, etc. but it's just a pretty simple example. Okay, so one thing to keep in mind is that whenever you move the 3D render, you also want to move the Z-pass because you want those to always line up. So here's our Z-pass and here's our uh, 3D render. We'll even take our Z-pass and color code it uh, so that we can see it. So it's the red one. All right, so we'll shut it off just for a moment and we'll come over to our project and we'll take some of our action essentials too. Now you could use you know your own footage, but these are some cool elements that uh, are available at Video Copilot. You know, this is a cool kind of explosion of dirt 
And what we can do is drop it into the project. Again, we want to parent it to the null and uh, put it above the render. So we'll slide it over here. And then we'll shorten the length of it. So here we go. Right? Maybe take the uh, mask tool and subtract the bottom half there and hit F. I'll just feather it a touch. So that way it just blends nicely. Damn. So this again, like I said, this isn't bad and you know we could probably make this work, but we want it to integrate with our render. So first let's color correct it. So we'll choose uh, tint and uh, effects, uh, curves. I like to use the tint to kind of desaturate it and then we can use the curve adjustment to match the color tone. So that's not too bad. You know, we could scale it up and, and reposition it. So now the depth compositing part. How do we do the depth compositing? Well, we put the Z pass above whatever element we want to composite. And then let's solo the Z pass for a moment. I'm going to choose Effect Color Correction Exposure. And what this is going to allow us to do is clamp it. So we're basically going to be doing a Luma mat. So what we want to do is crush the depth map so that we have a very contrasted image. So we'll even duplicate the exposure. And so now we have a very, very tight uh, depth of that one slice. It's kind of like a CT scan or something. And I'm no medical doctor, but you can just take my word for it. Anytime I give you medical advice, I recommend it. And so what we want to do is adjust the first exposure and able to find the slice point. So now we take our dirt charge and set it to Luma Matte Inverted. So that might be off the screen, but uh, it's the bottom there. So now we have, you know, check that out. It's sort of composited inside of our 3D render. Now we can even go back and tweak it. You know, we can turn the gamma back up so that it's a little bit softer. You know, and then we can even change the exposure to change where we want it to exist. So one of the biggest problems is when you have things flying towards the camera. So with depth compositing, we can make it seem like objects are in front of the smoke and the fire and things like that. So it really makes things look more realistic. And then we can, you know, we can duplicate this. So we can take the uh, dirt and the Z-Pass, duplicate it, maybe uh, move it over a bit as this back piece falls down. Maybe we have a a charge that goes off in the back and then we'll just change the Z position so we'll push it further back here so now we have one you might even rotate the secondary one and scale it down a bit so not too bad we could uh, even come back over here take uh, you know some of these dust elements from Action Essentials and uh, Again, we want to just feather out the edges, so hit F and soften that and then lower the opacity. So this is going to just help kind of composite everything together nicely. And since dust is usually on top of everything, we don't really have to adjust it other than maybe a quick tint uh, color correction. So maybe we'll make this like a light blue or something like that. But you can really see it makes a big difference compared to not having it and uh, and having it. So uh, it's a pretty simple technique and uh, if you render out your Z-Pass, you know, you can really do some fun stuff. Uh, again, if we're looking at this element example, we can do pretty much the same thing. So if we take out some fire here and, you know, scale it up, let's put the element Z-Pass here and uh, we'll add the exposure effect. And one thing about the element is you can control the Z-Pass right here with the depth output. So we can probably even do it without an exposure effect by just tightening up the Z-Pass start and end so we can, you know, pull it off kind of the same way. Uh, let's see here. Put the fire, F4, set it to Luma inverted. All right, so now we have some fire, you know, burning on these pieces and, uh, you know, you can... Tweak, tweak the depth a little bit here and uh, 
So it's a pretty cool way to combine 2D effects with your 3D animations. Hopefully this uh, tutorial is giving you some cool tips. My name is Andrew Kramer, and we will see you next time.